Hello, I'm Atubo Jojo. I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, today is Friday. <laughs> I always tell you this thing. On Fridays, make sure you've uh, understood everything we spoke about for the week. So you have this opportunity to go listening again from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and today's message. And, and if you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, why don't you do so right now? So that you can find these messages easily. Just go to our YouTube channel. You, you see them. You see the titles. And listen again and again. Sometimes one time listening is not enough. Sometimes you need to listen, you need to listen over and over and over. So it sings in your heart. See? Let the word dwell in your heart deeply to the point that your thoughts and your actions begin to come from your understanding of the word of God. And that's where you begin to produce the works of faith. Praise God. Are you ready to make your demand today? Join me in faith right now and say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I was sharing something very important with you yesterday. You see, that's the part of the covenant we, we, we go carefully look at. And Abraham, after he had given his tithes, he did something. Being instructed of the Lord. He gave away every other thing that he brought from that warfare. Now, what was he doing? The Lord was making him to trust in him. Now, you see Abraham do that. Doesn't mean you just wake up and say, hey, I'm going to do it. Ah, that's what the Lord say. Ah, I think... Ah. I'm so desperate. I want to do No. You see, first and foremost, get the word of God to abide in you deeply. Understand what we are sharing with you. Now, that was the problem. You know, when the disciples began to do that, Ananias and Sapphira woke up to and said, oh, this is the, the revival taking place now. Let's get in. <laughs> and they too had a land. They went to sell their land. And now when they saw the money of the land, their heart failed them. We, we, we can give everything. We can give everything. What do you mean the church is going to take all this? Because then they, they, they bring all that money and then they bring it to the church. They brought it to the apostles' feet. And then the apostles are the ones who make distributions of these things. So they, they began to do something, man, this money is going to you. Ah, let's cut it. So husband and wife agreed that they will cut it. And then they cut it, the husband came. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And they dropped it. Now, you see, I They wouldn't have received. Because, see, they, they, they were deceiving God for deceiving themselves. So that it doesn't happen that other people are receiving testimonies and they don't. Sometimes, you know these things, you see, God sees the hearts. Men will see your actions. There are times people take certain actions, but their hearts are not perfect. Or they've not received the measure of God's word they ought to have. And they are rushing to take an action. And when they take the action, doubt comes into their heart. And you see them sitting down there, they are shaking and regretting. And some people even give offerings. And then they just say, can, can, can. they call the pastor and say, Pastor, sorry, I gave this offering. I actually made a mistake. I was um, planning to transfer this amount, but I don't know how I got into now, there are, there are genuine cases like that where people make mistakes. But then there are cases where their hearts failed them. 
sorry, uh, please, I don't know if the, you, the church can return. See. Now, when somebody does that to a church, I mean, what's, you better return the money. You, don't, you can't take that kind of money. You know, sometimes you've given it to God, so you, you cannot collect it back from God's hand. No, you, you don't do that. You don't do that. You know, Peter said to him, when the land was your own, was it not your, was it not in your power? Even after you sold it, was it still not in your So you could have simply said, we are giving God this part of the sales of the land. But then that wouldn't have measured up to what was going on as a debt. Because the purpose of what they were doing then was to prove that their faith and their trust was in the Lord. They were not giving it to enrich the church. They were giving it to prove. So if, if you've not received the word of God into your heart first, that is a step that you may regret. I, I pray you understand what I'm sharing with you now. You remember that rich young ruler came to Jesus and says, I, I, I want to receive eternal life. Why was he seeking for eternal life? This man was rich. So what was he looking for? He knew there was something. That he knew. So he came to Jesus. Because you, you look at Jesus. Jesus didn't have as much money as you think he, he would have had. No, he didn't. You know what I mean? He did it physically. You will see Jesus and call him a rich man. Because you don't see affluence around him. But there was something about Jesus. Like we say today, you know, maybe he was hiding his wealth. <laughs> so, there was just something about Jesus that whenever he needed anything, he gets it. He gets it. Now, because the truth is, where is he going to keep his wealth? In your bank? He advised us that we should not keep money in the bank. Pastor, what do you mean that literally? What did Jesus say? Don't lay up treasures here on earth. That's what he meant by that. Eh? That would be hard though. <laughs> I can't hear someone think. <laughs> So here's Jesus. He, he didn't look rich, but yet he was rich. So he, he, he was here and see this crowd before him. He wanted to feed them. He said, look, we're going to feed them. Where? Are you going to buy bread to feed them? Do you know how much it's going to cost to buy bread to feed these people? He just said, it's okay, we'll feed them right here. We don't need to go anywhere. How? And Jesus said, what do we have? He said, we, we, we just have five loaves and two fishes. And I've told you before this broadcast, those five loaves and two fishes were given to them by that little boy. It was a... An offering that that boy brought. Maybe it was a tithe the boy brought. Okay, he, he he brought it to the disciples and said, "Look, I'm giving this." So it wasn't that they were now looking for. You know, what do we have? Started like, hey, what do we? Does anybody have anything? Yet? No. Then the boy now said, "Hey, hey, yes, I have five loaves and two." No, the boy had brought the five loaves and the two fishes to them. So they were in possession with it already before Jesus even came about feeding the people. See, so here is the truth. Um, when 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 the word of the Lord came to you, sometimes the, how do you get how do you know all these things by revelation? Of course, it's not something I think in my mind. It's not I don't um what was the word now? I, I don't coin these things. No. See, the way you study the scriptures is not the way I study the scriptures. I, I've told you before, there's a difference between a Bible teacher and a word teacher. A word teacher is in deep relationship with God. He has to be, if not, he cannot qualify to teach. If God has called you to be a teacher of his word, you've got to be in a very deep relationship with him. 
so deep that he would have to be your teacher. And when he's your teacher, you must learn to stay in the path of truth. Because you see, if you don't know this, I, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching you now. If you're a minister, you must understand this. If you don't know this, no matter the depth of your ministry, Satan will always try to infiltrate you. In fact, the, the, especially a teacher and a prophet. Ah, Satan, he, he'll look for your head. So the first thing he will try to do is to infiltrate you. So if you've not found your own way of measuring the revelations you get, you'll be in trouble. I'm telling you, the truth, you'll be in trouble. Because right in the presence of God, Satan can come. He doesn't fear the presence of God. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. He doesn't. Don't think, I'm, I'm, I'm in deep fasting. Satan cannot come near you. That is the time you're so vulnerable and so open to the devil, you don't realize it. People have fasted and prayed, especially people who do long fasting. So you, you, you better be careful that's why proverbs tells us in all you're getting get understanding because if you lack understanding i had that you get into some deep trouble and you get other people into trouble yeah because satan doesn't fear your fasting satan doesn't fear you'll be standing right with jesus like this and satan will come he will not come and say hey jesus uh, uh, please don't touch me. No, he will come as though Jesus isn't there. And the funny thing about it is, Jesus is not going to say, "What are you doing? Get out from here!" No, he will not. Do, he will do nothing. And Satan will just come and say, "Hey, come and follow me." And people have been foolish, foolish in such situations to follow him. I've said this many times. Jesus, Jesus, this is Jesus, the word of God. This is the word of God. Fasting 40 days and 40 nights. And what's the recorded encounter we have with Satan? During his 40 days fasting, yes, he had three encounters with Satan. Satan was not afraid of his fasting. In fact, it was after Satan left that's the angels now came and ministered to him. Why didn't they fight Satan from coming near him? Because that's not how the kingdom works. You think, oh, because I'm so holy right now, no devil can come near me. You have deceived yourself. I'm sharing this with you to help you. Because sometimes people have begun to receive revelations from the devil and they think it's from the Lord. They don't know how to know the difference. There are times I've heard voices and I'm like, ah, nah. See, that, that's why fellowship, deep fellowship is very important. Because when you know someone, it, that's all it takes. Knowledge. The knowledge of him. When you know him, it's so easy to know the devil. Yeah. Because he doesn't come sneakily to you. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? He doesn't come. There's a way the Lord speaks and there's a way the devil speaks. In terms of sound, the sound is alive. The sound is alive because you hear it in your mind. Please understand what I'm sharing with you now. How do I, 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 I differentiate the voice of, the, of God and the voice of the devil? You can't differentiate the, the, the both voices by hearing. You differentiate by knowledge. Yeah. So you know someone uh, just the same way you do with your phone calls. Someone can call you and actually disguise his voice. Now, all you need to do is to say, keep speaking. Keep speaking. And then there's something the person will say, like, ah, I know you, I know you, you're so, so, so person. You understand? Now, why are you doing keep speaking? Because you feel you know this person. So let's just continue. I will know, I will know who you are. It's the same way. If you don't know the Lord, if you don't spend time with the Lord, how will you know him? 
And then if you don't know him, how can you differentiate his voice from the voice of the devil? If you are the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. To a hungry man. <laughs> that, that, that will skip right there. There, there are times, you know, that, that's why when people are too interested in power, you know what I mean by that? Preachers who are so interested in power. I want power, I want power, I want power, I want power. And then they go into long fasting. Now, many times, hear me, manifestations, power, many times they have contacted familiar spirits and they began to run their ministries by familiar spirit without knowing. There are many of them like that. Not every word of knowledge is from the spirit of God. Some are from familiar spirits and they are very accurate because it's from familiar spirits. So because someone calls your phone number, because someone tells you how, tell you the shirt you were wearing yesterday, it doesn't mean that that's God. <sighs> now there are some, of, some ministers like that that started with God. Okay? They, 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 they got born again. They loved the Lord. But then because of their thirsts, Satan showed up. They didn't know the difference and they embraced it. And from that day, he begins to lead them. You know the funny thing? You say, ah, no, but why would God allow such to happen to you? It's, it's, see, when you walk with God long enough, there are certain things you begin to understand about him. I was talking to my wife, right? I said, sometimes God can be amazing when you don't know him. Right in his presence, you make certain mistakes. I was saying, how come everyone that cried to God, even for the wrong things, God gave them? See, Moses got tired and said, Lord, I can't bear this body no more. These people, they are too, I can't, I just can't. I need help. And what, God, what was God's response? Okay, select 70 men, and I'm going to bring your, take your spirit and lay it on you. Ha -ha. Just like that. Sorry, Lord. Did, did you know that Moses needed that kind of help before you waited for his complaint to think about it? Elijah went before the Lord said, I'm tired. I don't want to do it again. I'm tired. Because, okay, um, go. You will find Elisha. Anointing. You'll find Hazel. You'll find him. Um, what's your guy's name now? Joel. Or is it Joel? Or, you know who I'm talking about? King of Israel. So anoint them. Just like that. The general of Israel came to, uh, what's it called now? Samuel. I said, want a king? Give us a king. Like the other nations. I said, like, hey, what are you talking about? Don't try it. Tell, give us a king. They went before the Lord. Well, so it's okay. They didn't reject you. They rejected me. Give them a king. But just tell them that this is the kind of king they will get. And God even went as far as selecting a king for them. Think about it. Why do we now? And sometimes those things don't end well. So I was talking to my wife about it, and I, and I said, no wonder, the book of Hebrews says, even the angels have to wonder, what is in man that you are mindful of? When it comes to God's relationship with man, it's such a funny relationship. That if you are not careful in following him, and how do you show carefulness in following him? The thoughts in your heart should be single to know him. So imagine when Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane prayed that prayer. He says, Lord, if it is possible, take this cup from me. Thank God for his ability to pause and say, nevertheless, not my will. Let your will be done. God could have easily said, all right, no problem. Um, you've got to think of what to do next. <laughs> Maybe he'll come up with another wisdom. 
Imagine if Jesus is too heavy for me today. Moses did that. Elijah did that. This thing is too heavy for me today. So Jesus was going through those pains at that moment. So the fact that you're working perfectly with God doesn't stop frustration from coming to you. Everyone who had worked with God faced seasons of frustrations. So don't think, I don't know why I'm going through this. I love God. I serve God. Wah, 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 wah. Okay. Praise God. So be careful as a servant of God. See? Because there are times, as a teacher of God's word, there are times, I, I think I've shared this with you, with you before. There are times the Spirit of God carries me in, in revelations and take me back and I'm there. I find myself there. These things we're reading about. I, I find myself there and I see what happens. So that brings me to a place of deeper understanding. Right? This is what they were talking about. This is what they meant. So listen to me as a child of God. The covenant of Titan, I'm going to end with this. The covenant of Titan brings us to a place where we believe that God sustains us. And because we believe that God sustains us, hear me, we can give him our all. And when we give him our all with this understanding, we sit back and watch him take care of everything that concerns us. As a child of God, you've not gotten to that point yet. Trust me, your, your depth of work or the level of your work with God is still shallow. You'll get to a season where God will demand your all. So give me everything. Not because he wants it. I'm telling you the truth. He's proving your faith. Because it's the all that Abraham gave that have brought us to where we are in him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. I pray for you. And the Lord will take you into a deeper level of knowledge and understanding. So that you will begin to enjoy the fullness of God's blessings and, and, and God taking care of you. Receive this right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I, I wish I had more time to go into this. It's still a lot, but we're going to continue next week. Praise God. May God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.